It's crazy, but in Throne of Liberty, low graphic settings might be a trap, no matter what hardware you have. It's a trap! I will explain why that might be the case, because today we're talking about graphic settings and other ways to improve your performance in Throne and Liberty. Make sure to watch this video all the way through, because I ended up mentioning a couple bonus tips here and there that are not strictly related to performance, but will improve your gaming experience. All right, before we jump into the graphic settings, first of all, let's go through some steps that are going to quickly increase your FPS. And the first one is, of course, Ami Toys. They're these little pets you see all around here. They pick up your loot drops. They can go on expeditions for you. They're so useful. I even made a whole video about how they work. Yeah, disable them. Go into the settings straight away. Gameplay character. Uh, show others Ami Toy. Quickly disable that option, they are all gone from the screen, performance is not affected, you're no longer trying to load every Amitoy, their different skins and their different cute interactions and how they roll around and jump around. That's good because that's going to increase your FPS straight away. Same with the hair strands. Let's look at the, at the hair right now. Now it doesn't look that bad actually. Uh, we're going to go into the settings, we're going to go into graphics, quality, and we're going to enable hair strands. Now we have realistic hair, very thin hair that's flowing. Uh, the problem is it's trying to make this realistic hair and the hair strands on other models as well. So that's going to eat your performance. And when you're zoomed out and when you're fighting and, you know, in the mid of battle, uh, you're not going to be looking at your hair. So go into the settings, graphics, quality, all the way down, immediately disable hair strands. And then finally, let's go into the settings, gameplay, character, all the way at the top here, there's going to be select targets to show skill effects. We're going to put it on show guild member animations only. If we're selecting show all, everybody who's participating in a large battle, let's say all these people are killing a boss, we're going to see all of their casted effects. Two hours later. All right, look at this. I can see everybody's skills. They're all casting into this PvE boss uh, and you can see every skill effect is moving around with him. You can see everybody who's protected by blood devotion. Uh, all the projectiles are flying and I'm getting barely like 30 FPS, you know, not reaching 40 FPS at all throughout this whole fight. See? All the meteors, everything that's visible. That's because we have show everybody's skill um, effects in here. Gameplay character, show all. Now we're going to limit it to guild members and party members. So if we select guild members, we're only going to see some random effects just to create the atmosphere and then the uh, cast effects of our party members. You can see they're shooting their crossbow. Um, some of the effects are coming through. Uh, otherwise, I'm not able to see anybody else's effects and we're getting already 47, 48, 50, almost 50 FPS uh, in this type of fight without any frame generation. So we basically went up like, I don't know, 40%, 30% FPS just by disabling everybody's skills. All right, now let's jump into the graphics settings. We're going to go into the graphics menu and the second tab quality. There's some guides out there that will tell you if you have older hardware, just go on low and forget about it. And then if you have some up-to-date hardware, you can try high and epic and see what works. Now, this game is kind of very special in that regard. Somehow, NCSoft, the devs of Throne and Liberty, have optimized this game on high and even medium to such an extent that, to be honest, it runs better on almost all hardware in medium or high preset. If you go to low, it might seem like you're getting a few more FPS, you know, by sacrificing a lot of quality. But in reality, once you play on low quality for some time, you're going to notice the choppiness. You're going to notice that you know, your performance is just not up to par. And what I've heard from a lot of people who play this game for a long time is that they found that high preset 
works much better than low even on the older hardware now i cannot tell you exactly which settings to use here you know the individual settings because it's going to depend on your hardware i'm working with the nvidia 3080 gpu so if you have something similar then you can try and copy it but otherwise i would say in these quality settings just try and play around definitely you know if you're feeling like your game is just not quite there don't stick to low settings try and play around with medium try and play around with high and see what it what works for you you can put everything on high and then start reducing some of the you know less impactful items like shadow quality distant shadow quality uh, maybe effect quality you know you reduce it a little bit i wouldn't go low here as well because some effects might just not show in terms of the cast animations and things like that but yeah i would say go too high on most of them and then start reducing if you're really feeling the bottleneck if your gpu is showing as if we're using a hundred percent what really in this line what really is gonna impact your fps is first of all the character count so whenever you're in a large scale that doesn't require you to see a lot of enemies like in siege instead when you're in large scale that is pve for example pve open world bosses i would go with character count set to low you're gonna only see a few people around you there's gonna be more people hitting the boss you know behind the boss everywhere but you're not gonna see them and so you're not gonna drop fps because of that once you're in large scale pvp of course you're gonna have to go at least to high sometimes i go to epic just to see the whole battlefield and distant enemies that's going to be important so to compensate for the fps drops that this is going to cause i'm using frame generation which we're going to talk about in a bit but yeah i think high is like a nice medium here for the character count this is definitely going to impact your fps so take note and another one that is also important is shader preloading i keep it on epic and my understanding of this is that the less the game has to load and render in the real time the more it can preload in advance the better your performance is going to be and this is what um, this setting is doing on epic shader preloading it's trying to preload as many shaders as possible before you actually encounter those textures and once you encounter them they're already preloaded and they sh they're showing to you in the best quality possible without having to load on the spot so shader preloading definitely on max everything else you can still play around especially with stuff like volumetric clouds volumetric fog you know the game is going to look a little bit worse if you go lower but it's going to help you know your performance overall especially with the lower graphics cards that cannot handle some of these special effects Again, hair strands, we already discussed, very important to turn that off. I have large scale optimizations on and I use DirectX 12 as well. One other setting here that might actually help your FPS is vegetation quality. I've traveled to nesting grounds. We have it on high right now. And let's just check how many FPS we get. We're running this way. We're getting like 96 on high. Turn around. We dip under 70, but generally staying around 70 with all this vegetation, all these flowers in front of us. You can see how far they go. The pink goes all the way there. 76 and as we turn around it's like 99 maximum now let's go to um, graphics quality vegetation quality drop it down to low first of all you'll notice that you know only near flowers show up and only a few of them we don't see anything in the distance at all it's no longer pink it's just green and no flowers are showing but if we turn around we're suddenly going over 100 fps and as we turn back, it's hovering around high 80s. It's not deeping, dipping to 70, uh, not let alone 60. It's almost at 90 as we look this way. And then back here, we're straight over 100 again. Now I'm not running any frame generation, not running any DLSS for this. This is just pure frames without any boosting. So going on vegetation quality low does help your fps if you want to get some more and you're just gonna sacrifice you know how it looks in the distance and all around you in summary just please don't get jubated into the low settings you know like turning on low seeing that the game is not performing that great and thinking yeah i cannot go any higher i'm getting bad performance even on low settings i better uninstall well before you do that just try other settings combinations just try a high with some of 
the settings reduced to medium or low, but in general high performance. I'm telling you, there's some special optimization magic that's happening in this game where the game feels much smoother, much better on high than it would feel on low settings. Now, I want to share a tip that I've not noticed to improve or decrease performance, but it really improves your quality of life, especially if you're maybe like leading a group in large scale PvP or shot calling for the raid, uh, this large scale combat mode. Some people like to use it, uh, and I think it's on by default, but what I found that works for me really well is to turn that large scale combat mode off and you'll see on screen two different versions of this. Uh, the top one is where the large scale combat mode is on. And you'll see we're fighting whales here. Their enemy icons are orange. And then in a second, we're starting to fight rabbits and they're orange as well. With the large scale mode on, it's just super confusing to see who's where at the first glance. And at the bottom, you will see all the different guild colors, the green wolves, the blue paws, and yellow turtles. We're fighting everybody. We know exactly who is from which guild, where they're positioned. This is with the large scale combat off. And I really prefer this way. It gives a better overview. All right, let's talk about frame generation. So you can find that in the graphics settings and then go to screen, scroll down a little bit. You have a couple options, Nvidia DLSS, and AMD FSR2. AMD option you can use with any graphics card, I believe. So let's look at that. I'll put quality. Uh, and if we zoom in a little bit, you'll find that I'm starting to move and you'll see that my frames are not actually jumping up uh, that much. It's still hovering around 70 with this option, but my character has become pixelated. There's like, I don't know if you can see it on the video, there's like squares. Uh, when I move around the edges of my character. The more stuff is happening, the more pixelated it can become. What I actually do use is the NVIDIA DLSS option. NVIDIA DLSS frame generation. See the frames shot up straight away. 130, sometimes it goes to 140 even, on like static scenes, and it almost doubled the frame rate. Look, 144 at the limit that I've set it to. I really like this option, especially in the big siege battles when the, my, my normal frame rate drops a little bit. And then this helps me generate some extra frames to get me to that 100, 120, nice, smooth level of gameplay. And it doesn't have the pixelation that the FSR has. You see, it's smooth movement. I can morph. I don't see any artifacting, any squares on the morph. It's really, really nice. So I do recommend this option if you can get it. This option is disabled and not even usable unless you have a 40 series uh, NVIDIA card. So 40, 70, 40, 80, 40, 90, um, and you know, the different variations. If you have 30 series or less, this will be grayed out for you and you cannot even click on it. What you need is the extra mod. It's a Nexus mod called DLSS 2 FSR. It's basically just an external mod that um, is focused on graphical en enhancements and really is just enabling this option for various games, including for Throne and Liberty. You download this mode, there's an instruction on how to set it up, and then you have this uh, tick box unlocked and you're actually able to use frame generation on lower series GPUs. You can unlock it on the Korean version. The problem is the Steam version, um, it's blocking this mod. At least we've tried it in the betas and it was blocking the mod. So I cannot guarantee that this solution will work for you if you have a 30 series cards or lower on global. I am gonna be testing another solution kind of a software type of solution that can increase the frames. And once I tested it and if it's working, I'm going to be sharing that with you in another video, probably slightly after global launch, because I'm going to be testing it uh, as we prepare for global. Uh, but as soon as I know if that's an option and if this frame generation option is not going to be available in global, I'm going to be sharing that with you guys. So subscribe to catch that and more useful videos in the future. 
All right, another bonus tip for you. If you're one of those people that think the game looks a little bit bland in some places, maybe in Grey Claw Forest or in the desert like this, where the tones are really muted and not popping, yeah, you can do something if you have the NVIDIA graphics card and you can bring up the NVIDIA um, side panel. For me, the game filter button is Alt F3. I don't know if that's default. You can figure out how to bring this up and then you go into game filter you see I have none selected right now this is how my game looks it's kind of a, a little beige and you know you can notice the color of this dress is kind of red but now if we go and we just literally add a vibrance filter to it now the, the desert is a lot more orange and it's a lot more warm color tone and the red dress is popping a lot more so this is literally just a color filter. You can go into this list of different filters um, and just add color to it. Open it, open it up and remove all the tint, all the tint intensity. Uh, don't touch the temperature and just start raising vibrance to something around 30. That's pretty much what I use on this vibrance filter. You can see zero color, zero intensity, vibrance 30. That's the filter I use. If you want to go even more uh, nuts with it, you can uh, add another filter to it like brightness contrast and then uh, do some more exposure contrast highlights to 20. You can reduce shadows a little bit like let's say to minus five or six and then this is how the game is going to look. Uh, the pumpkins are super bright orange. You know, you can see all those lanterns br brightly lit up and all the icons, everything on the ground is a lot more vibrant. Now, just to compare, let's quickly turn off the filter. Yeah, it's a little bit more bland. I kind of like it in the middle with just the vibrance added on, but without the actual contrast and other filters. But this is really up to you it doesn't like improve your performance this is clearly just visual you can see the side by side the crystal is popping in one of these with the vibrance and is a little bit more bland in the other one if you like it feel free to use this extra filter um, again just as a bonus tip doesn't really help your performance that much it's just what you prefer if I missed any graphic related tips, leave them in the comments below and I will try to incorporate them when I make an updated video after the global release. If you found something useful here, give me a like and if you already know everything in this video, then share it on your guild discord, it might help someone. Thank you for watching this all the way until the end, enjoy Throne and Liberty and have a nice day.